What you're looking at here is a very calculated risk. It is, of course, the all new BMW 1 Series. And that risk is that it really is all new, right down to the deletion of BMW's once favoured rear wheel drive setup. Clearly, we've got plenty to get stuck into over the next few minutes, but before we begin, here's a reminder to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and switch on those notifications by clicking on the bell icon so that you'll know when our new videos go live. Right, so where to start? Let's ignore the massive grille and instead focus on the car's proportions. It's the same length as the outgoing BMW 1 Series, but it's slightly wider and slightly taller. And the bonnet is a little bit shorter because the engine is transversely mounted, which basically means that way. And the overall stance is squat, which is particularly the case with this M Sport car because it's got 10 millimeter lower suspension and 19 inch alloy wheels. One of the big reasons for making the BMW 1 Series now front-wheel drive is to free up some boot space. It's now a Volkswagen Golf matching 380 litres and it has this excellent folding floor which you can just move out of the way. But we're using it right now to hold these children's toys that we're going to play on later. The rear seats split and fold and there's a flat floor with only a tiny loading lip to negotiate. For the first time, the 1 Series can also be ordered with a power tailgate. It's not just the boot that's grown, BMW says the new platform gives rear passengers an extra three and a half centimetres of legroom. And I can believe it, it definitely feels roomy in the back here. And if you're buying a BMW expecting a premium feel, then the 1 Series does not disappoint. The same applies to the quality and layout of the dashboard, which takes inspiration from the latest 3 Series. It does feel more compact in here than a BMW 3 Series, but it is far from cramped. And the driving position is excellent. There's plenty of adjustment in the seat and lots of controls. I don't think I'm going to need that one. And a bit more adjustment. That could be a while. And there's also enough adjustment in the steering wheel for reach and rake so you can get a really comfortable driving position. We still aren't entirely convinced by BMW's digital dial display. The systems in the Audi A3, Volkswagen Golf and Mercedes A-Class are much more configurable. We have no such criticisms of the infotainment system though. As standard, you get a slightly smaller screen, but this car is fitted with the larger live cockpit professional system, which is part of the Tech 2 package. You can control it via touch, gesture, or the BMW iDrive buttons down here. It also comes with BMW's personal assistant. So let me show you something, because you can control some of the systems by voice. Hi, BMW. Hello. What can I help you with? I'm cold. Oh, I am raising the temperature and activating your seat heating, so it will be warmer shortly. Oh, very good. Right, while I warm up, let's have a bit more of a poke around in here. All these buttons and controls feel really good quality, as does everything else in here and what we would expect from a BMW. And then in terms of storage, well, that's really good. We've got two cup holders here. We've got a good size glove box. We've got a little bit more storage here. And we've got somewhere to put a large bottle of water. Now, although it may not be as striking as the new Mercedes A-Class with its dual screen, it's still a cut above everything else in the class. <laughs> and on that note, let's take it for a drive. The car we're driving today may look like a hot hatch, but it's actually the entry level 118i, which is about as far from the flagship two litre turbo M135i as you can get. It's a three cylinder, 1.5 litre petrol. The engine is super quiet, smooth, responsive, and surprisingly brisk. It's only really when you want to go from 60 to 70 that you'll crave more power. That aside, it's a great car for motorway driving. The official stats say this engine produces 138 brake horsepower and 162 pound-foot of torque. That might not sound like loads, but it's enough to get the 118 from 0 to 62 in 8.5 seconds. 
You can get the One Series with an automatic gearbox, but this car is fitted with a six-speed manual. It has a direct shift and a clear biting point on the clutch, making it really intuitive to drive. Now, considering it's on 19-inch alloy wheels, the ride actually is pretty good. And if you go for smaller rims and BMW's adaptive suspension, it's better yet. For that, you can thank the tireless work BMW has put into getting the suspension of this new One Series just right. A good example of this is the use of a multi-link setup on the rear instead of a torsion bar. BMW says it improves the sophistication of the ride and improves the handling because it makes the car stiffer. Now, while some of its competitors will do this on more expensive versions, BMW has fitted it to every single one series. At the same time, BMW has foregone a variable ratio steering rack in favour of a quicker constant ratio system. This is all in a bid to make the One Series as great to drive as it possibly can be. It really is a satisfying car to drive. It steers well, there's plenty of grip and it just feels keen. The only thing you don't get is that wonderful balance that really only comes with having rear wheel drive. And even though this is the lowest powered One Series, you still get occasions where the front wheels are trying to put that power down on the road and the steering wheel squirms in that attempt. Overall, it's a really polished car and arguably better to drive than its competitors. But in terms of pure driver appeal, it doesn't stand out compared to its predecessors. Which, of course, is precisely the calculated risk BMW is taking with this car. BMW's own research has even shown that most One Series drivers didn't even know their car was rear-wheel drive, which begs the question, is it really that important, particularly when the firm's desire is to optimise the packaging? Looked at through the lens, it's no surprise that BMW has made the latest One Series front-wheel drive. Given its heritage of building driver-focused cars, it's also probably not a surprise to hear me say that in terms of dynamics, this is probably the best a front-wheel drive family car can be. It may have lost a little of its individuality, but in ways that matter to most people, this is the best One Series yet. Will you mourn the demise of the rear-wheel drive one series or does this new model pique your interest? Let us know in the comments below. Please do also like and subscribe to this channel and remember that when it comes to choosing your next car, you can easily find great deals from top-rated dealers at cargurus.co.uk.